This sandwich is full of fungus? Yep, it's what makes it so tasty. Damon's about to find out why. Wow! Look at that amazing blue sky! How can we make the most of a day like today? A picnic, of course! Come on, Grace! Hmm, we don't seem to have any bread. There's only one stale cracker left. How are we going to make cheese and tomato sandwiches? Hey, why don't we bake our own bread? We need butter, salt, sugar, dried yeast, and three cups of plain flour. One cup, two cups, and three. One teaspoon of salt, two big dollops of butter. Now I rub the butter into the flour. Once the butter's mixed in, I make a hole in the centre of the flour. Grace is dissolving a teaspoon of sugar in a small amount of warm water. Add two teaspoons of the dried yeast. One, two. It smells strong. Pour that into the middle of my mixture. Now this is the bit I really like. Kneading the dough. And really get stuck into it. Lots of kneading makes good bread. He said he'd bring bananas for everyone at our picnic. But it's only two days away and the bananas aren't ripe. Hmm. I know a great trick. Come on. Leave the bananas on the table and we'll go and find a plastic bag. This one will seal up nice and tight. Good. This is what you do. Pop a green banana inside the bag and seal it so no air can escape. There. And just to show Shakib I'm right, I leave another green banana outside the bag. That way he'll see the difference. All we do is keep them in the warm air and come back tomorrow. See, it worked. Nice and yellow. And the one outside the bag is still green. Come on, let's get more bags. Saif's trick worked because as bananas ripen, they produce ethylene gas. The gas helps an enzyme in the banana speed up the ripening process. Normally, a lot of the gas would escape and be blown away by the wind. But because it was trapped in the plastic bags, she keeps bananas ripened lickety split. Now let's fill up all these bags. In they go! There we are! Enough bananas for everyone at the picnic. And by this time tomorrow, they'll all be as tasty as this one. Mm, it seems like everyone's planning a picnic today. Damon and Grace are busy getting theirs ready too. Our home-baked bread is looking good. I finished kneading the dough. See how it's spongy and soft, but it likes to spring back into shape when I poke it. Time to leave it to rise. Back into the bowl, cover it up with plastic wrap, and leave it somewhere warm for about two hours. Rise, my beautiful bread. Okay, it's ready. I'll grease up a baking tray while Grace gives the dough another quick knead. The baking tray likes cooking bread too. Grab a nice lump of dough, about a small handful. Roll it into a bowl and pop it on the tray. Let's make more. When the tray is full, cover it with plastic wrap and set it aside for about half an hour. Okay, you baby buns are ready for the oven. 
Yo, Dad. I'll get him to preheat the oven to 230 degrees Celsius. That's about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Yay! In 20 minutes, our rolls will be ready to eat. <laughs> Carrie Ann's humming is driving me crazy. I've asked her a million times to stop. But she just keeps on humming. How am I supposed to concentrate on my homework? Oh, this is torture. That's it. Hmm, it's a bit quieter, but it's hard to write with my fingers in my ears. Hmm, maybe it's not my ears that need to be blocked. If Carrie Ann can't breathe out through her nose, then she can't hum. Brilliant! One anti hum clothes pad. Padded for comfort, of course. Let's see your hum now, Maestro. Ah, silence. Sweet silence. When we talk or hum, the sound causing vibrations are created by air passing through the vocal cords in a part of our throat called the larynx. With a blocked nose and a closed mouth, Carrie Ann simply can't move any air through her vocal cords. Oh no! My peg trick didn't stop her for long. Well, if I can't stop her, I might as well join her. Hey, it's true! You can't hum with a blocked nose. Great! That means we can have some peace and quiet to concentrate on Billy's latest trick. We're all drawing crazy pictures of ourselves. Ew, I think my self-portrait needs a bit of help. Hey, where are all the coloured pens? How are we supposed to draw anything crazy with just black? Time for a bit of black magic. First, I'll trace a circle around this plastic lid. Now I divide my circle in half and draw a little circle in the middle. Colour that in. Now on this side, I'll mark some broken lines in a semicircle, like this. Keep going until there's a pattern across one side. And colour in the other half black. There, time to cut out the circle. Nice job. Now I'll lie it on top of the plastic lid and carefully poke this toothpick through the centre. There. One black magic spinning top. Hey guys, we do have a coloured pen after all. Help me roll up the carpet and I'll prove it. Watch the pattern on the spinning top closely. Can anyone see red, green or blue in the black pattern? When the spinning stops, the colour disappears. But where does it come from? Good question, Billy. The truth is, no one really knows for sure. This device, known as Venom's disc, has puzzled scientists for more than a hundred years. One theory is that the rapid change between black and white pulls the colour receiving cones on our retinas into sending the wrong colour images to our brains. So I didn't need coloured pens to see colours, but my self-portrait is definitely sending a bad image to my brain. Point in the Wimblepong final. Zach serves. Nash nice returned by me. Forehand from Zach. Forehand from me. Backhand volley from Zach. Another one from me. Tricky shot for Zach. Oh, and I've hit it out. Zach wins. Okay, Zach, it's only a game. Well done. Hmm, time for a different kind of match. I'll challenge Zach to lift a ping pong ball off the table without touching it. Have a go. Nice try, Zach. But you're never gonna do it like that. Wait while I get some stuff. Okay. Ball goes onto this cup. I poke a straw through this hole in the top. Tape that up. 
Now give a good hard blow into the straw. We have liftoff. When Giovanni blows, a low air pressure pocket is created where the air leaves the bottom of the straw. The rest of the cup is filled with high pressure air because it can't escape under the edges of the cup quickly enough. The air moves from the high pressure area towards the low pressure pocket, lifting the ball off the table. OK, now it's time to lift my game like I did that ping pong ball. Yay, I'm back, baby! So Giovanni can make a ping pong ball rise before your eyes. And Damon has also been making things rise in the kitchen. Our bread rolls cooked up nicely. While we wait for it to cool, I've got a little experiment to try. I've got a bottle with warm water in it and a balloon. I'm going to need some sugar and yeast too. Let's put lots of yeast in the bottle. About four or five teaspoons. Now two teaspoons of sugar. Shake that all around to help it dissolve. Pooh-wee! You can really smell that yeast. Now stretch the balloon over the mouth of the bottle. Like this. Now we just leave it for about 15 minutes. Wow! We've invented a whole new way to blow up a balloon. Believe it or not, yeast is actually alive. It's a single-celled fungus that feeds on the sugar in the warm water, giving off carbon dioxide gas. As the bubbles burst, they release the gas, which builds up enough pressure to inflate the balloon. The yeast in bread works the same way, producing carbon dioxide as it feeds on the flour and sugar. The gas gets trapped in the gluten contained in the flour, forcing the dough to rise. This is what makes the bread light and fluffy once it's baked. OK, time to sample the goods. Oh, yeah! Thanks to that yeast, our home-baked rolls make the perfect picnic food. Yum! That yeast is amazing stuff. I'd like to try it out for myself. Well, why don't we go and mix up a batch of dough? Well, we may as well, because we've come to the end of another episode. See, See you next time! time.